Hello everyone, it's Christoph here from Inter Studio. This time we will configure MIDI and get familiar with MIDI Dynamic and MIDI Static Actions in Grid Editor. First about MIDI Dynamic. This is the default MIDI configuration coming with Grid Modules. In Dynamic mode, modules will send different MIDI CC or note messages based on position. MIDI Dynamic Action got three input fields. The MIDI command, parameter 1 and parameter 2. The command input can process values between 128 and 255, be it decimal or hex. For example, if I'm writing a 0, 12 in this input field, it will say invalid parameter. If I write a hex code for a MIDI command, it will be validated. If it's 128, it's a valid parameter and 255 is also a valid MIDI command parameter. Let's just choose something from the drop-down menu. In the drop-down menu you can find the control change and note on note of commands. If you are using anything else regularly, please let me know and I will add it to this drop-down list. Parameter 1 is where the effective CC or note number is defined. This can be hard-coded, Values between 0 and 127 are valid. Here are two template parameters too. The default control number we use the default control element number assigned to the specific element and we take dynamic behavior into account. Reverse control number is like the mirror default value. This comes handy with Ableton's drum rack. See the samples are played mirrored or reversed to the B16 unit. By changing to reversed control number. What you see on the BU16, that's what you play in Ableton's drum rack. Parameter 2 is the control value or note velocity sent out. Template parameters with the corresponding input types and value reads are available. Under button type control elements, and as you can see I'm using here a button module, beside the standard control value read, toggle 2 and toggle 3 steps are also available. Let's see an example configuration how toggle 3 step can be used. First, remove the actions from the up event, go to the down event, change the note on from control change because we would send out note on messages without note off pairs because we removed the configuration from the up event. Now change parameter 2 to toggle 3 step, change the let face to toggle 3 step and see what happens. First time clearing the monitor and pressing it. Now it's a bit dimmer, like uh, the LED intensity is changed. And now it's on value 63, this is the value 127 and the LED is now in full uh, intensity and then I'm switching it off with value 0. 63, 127. That's the toggle 3 step on a button and remember it's on control change, the control number is used on parameter 1 and the toggle 3 step is changed here in parameter 2 and also on the LED phase intensity. Let's see an encoder module because there are different template parameters available. For example on this encoder when I'm rotating it, here I can see on parameter 2 there is the encoder episode value read and if I'm looking at the MIDI monitor then the data is changing going down, going up. If I'm changing it to encoder relative change, which puts the encoder into relative mode, then it will send 41 and 3F, which are 64 and 63 in decimal from the hex to decimal conversion. Let's see MIDI dynamic action in the real life. For example, this BU16 unit in this position sends MIDI data from control numbers 48 to 63. For example, if I'm changing this control element in the local settings panel 
from this template parameter to a hard-coded parameter like 10. Keep in mind that I'm changing both the down and up events. Okay, now if I'm pressing this, I'm getting hex 3a. Hex 3a is 58, so it's 48 plus 10, and that's 58. So in each position, the default control number, which would come from the template parameter, is added to this hardcoded parameter. So here it's uh, 58, and if I'm positioning this module here, and I'm connecting it, then here it will be 10, and here 11, but I did not save this configuration. So I'm coming back, okay, down, 10, up, 10, store, wait a bit, now it's green and validated, okay, it sends 3a which is 58, and come here, and now it's 1a instead of 10. This is 11, 12 and so on, like you can check it out uh, on the grid uh, firmware page. And 1A is 26, so that's, that looks good to me. Yeah, it should have been 16, so, so that's good. Let's see what happens here. So, beside this one works differently, as I showed previously, it's sending data on a different channel. Here, it's sending data on channel 2. If I'm coming back here, that's channel 1. And here, it's channel 2. If I change a bank, then it will be also a different channel, both in this position and in this position. So you can play around with the MIDI dynamic behavior, which affects both how the MIDI uh, control numbers or note uh, pitch values are aligned, and also how the channels are sent out from grid to your computer. This default behavior can be seen in the grid firmware user manual, so check that out for reference. Now about the MIDI static action. MIDI static removes the dynamic aspect and it's the action you should use for making the exit configuration you want. The input fields are the same, except channels can also be configured, valid parameters are between 1 and 16. So let's add the MIDI static action. And as you can see here I can change the channels, for example this one to channel 4. I define a control change, a default control number and an absolute value. And now on this control element I'm sending the uh, default control number absolute value out on channel 4. These are on channel 1. Ok, this control element is number 7, so the default control number is 7, which can be referred as CC volume, but this one can be hard coded easily, and also if I'm introducing a new module or I change the position of this module, this configuration will stay the same. So let's say we have here 22. And now it's sending CC22 on channel 4. I'm changing this one also at the MIDI static. Let's bring it up here. Remove this one. Okay, this removed my MIDI. This remove action um, removed my MIDI static because that wasn't validated. So first remove the old MIDI relative, add this MIDI static, control change say we have here 11 and absolute value read is what I need 
and now it has the expression map this one is cc22 expression okay that this one is going to be volume maybe why not that's going to be midi static come up control change mm, seven and absolute value okay volume and this one for breath control midi static control change two and absolute value come up and remove this one and that's it this is on channel 4 this is on channel 1 let's make it go to channel 5 and now it's on channel 5 make sure to store this configuration I disconnect the module and I reconnect the module I'm also restarting this MIDI monitor to see what's coming in and here we have CC22 expression, volume and breath control on the channels I defined earlier so MIDI static can be used to map every one of your configurations to your controller however you like it and uh, the positioning of the modules won't affect these MIDI static configurations. The software here I'm using is MIDI Ox. This is a Windows utility, but uh, for macOS you can find a lot of alternatives. For example, there is a built in one, and that's what I can recommend to see what grid is sending out to your computer. My plan is to add to this editor software a MIDI plugin or a MIDI monitor for both hexadecimal and decimal value reads. That would make both debugging and uh, these explanations much easier. Thank you for checking out this video on Grid Editor. More to come and see you in the next one. Bye.